All right, y'all, it's time to talk about the suspicious at best Canadian trucker protest that's happening right now, right? What's up with the money? What's up with the logistics? And what is going to be the results of all this? Um, so first, should be obvious, fueling trucks is very expensive, <laughs> like very expensive. And taking two, three, four weeks off of working is not exactly something that hardworking people can just do. Um, taking time off work when you're living paycheck to paycheck is not very smart. I get that a lot of individual truckers as well live out of their cabs, um, but there are now a lot of people, a lot of people in one place, one specific geographic place for an extended period of time. And there has to be a lot of overbooked and overstressed hotels and Airbnbs in that area. It's not adding up. It's not making sense. Also, not a lot of showers or food for all these truckers, um, you know, and there isn't a whole lot of shipping taking place at the moment because of all this. So, you know, any of these food shortages and supply shortages in the, in the cities that they're occupying, um, you know, it's not really going to be able to be resupplied very quickly. So the big question is, who's funding this all? What's up? What's really going on behind the scenes? Who is buying these truckers the food, the lodging, and the gas that is needed to make this whole thing possible, right? These are questions that need to be asked. Who is really behind the GoFundMe page that everyone points to when you bring this up? And how exactly are those funds being distributed? I get that money's being raised, but who's in charge of that money? Whose bank accounts are that money entering into? And how are we actually logistically putting that money into, what, debit cards and bank accounts? Um, of these truckers. How exactly is that happening, if at all? GoFundMe itself is, you know, not very conservative or Christian. It, you know, shuts those people down. <laughs> you know, if you're not aware, you know, they don't really um, like grassroots movements that support liberty and justice and conservative values or Christian values. They tend to shut those people down. And we're at $9 million right now on a fundraiser on their site that, you know, is supposedly going towards racists and sexists and science deniers, which obviously we know is not the case, but still it's perceived to be that way, and yet they're not shutting these this GoFundMe page down, or maybe they did, I think they put some kind of freeze on it or temporary lock on it or something, but, um, you know, just the questions need to be asked. Um, why are they being allowed to raise all this money, you know, in the first place? Why did it get that big? I wasn't allowed to get that big for that long. Um, GoFundMe decided that this is one of the funding campaigns on the right, <laughs> um, the quote unquote right, that, um, you know, is also going against the powers that be that, you know, for some reason they're allowing to just happen. <laughs> they're allowing to exist on their site. You know, do you find that suspicious? Do you find that suspicious? Uh, <laughs> and who exactly is in charge of this fundraiser? And, uh, you know, taking responsibility for distributing these supposedly authentic funds. You know, let's pretend for a minute that these funds are authentic, that it's not mostly foreign people donating, not actually Canadians. Um, let's give them the benefit of the doubt right now. Let's pretend like GoFundMe actually cares for once about people on the right and is allowing this to happen. The people that are actually in charge of this whole money laundering operation as it appears to be, let's pretend it's real. It is still being managed and operated and overseed by, you know, a well-known grifter, Ezra Levant, a woman named Tamara Licht, Lick, and a man named BJ Dichter. <laughs> BJ Dichter is a self-described equal rights advocate who founded LGB Tory, a conservative, quote unquote, conservative LGBT advocacy group. So of course his name matches his actions, right? <laughs> and of course he is infiltrating conservative circles and spreading degeneracy and anti-Christian values. You know, he's, he's a scammer, he's a schemer. <laughs> his intentions are not pure, let's just say that. Tomorrow licked, lick, will supposedly be the one who inherits all of the raised money into her bank account. Over $9 million, again, will be going into her bank account. And so she will be responsible for appropriately distributing the funds. She is a major player in the Maverick Party, 
and in fundraising for it. So I'm sure that none of these trucker convoys funds will uh, be used to support her own political party and her own purposes at all. You know, this this woman, you can totally trust her. You know, she's uh, definitely a campaign fundraiser for the Maverick Party. You can trust that all of these funds are going to be going to truckers and not actually to her own campaign interests or political interests. And Ezra Levant is just a well-known grifter. Anytime he's involved in anything, you know something's up, right? It's a right-wing gatekeeper who claims that using children for sympathy points is a solid strategy to manipulate people into supporting his cause or the cause he's promoting or involved in. And in the past, he has threatened his ex-employees with lawsuits if they were to speak out against his shady business dealings, along with a whole host and list of um, other shady things and questionable things in that man's uh, history and past. Now you just make this an Ezra Van hit piece video. And there are many good-hearted people supporting this trucker convoy. All right, right? It's like, there's, you can see in the videos, like there's real people lining up to cheer this on. There are really good-hearted people who want to make a change and want to make a difference who are supporting this. They're being led, their energy is being focused in the wrong direction into this inauthentic movement. And, you know, giving their time, their energy, their resources, their money to these truckers is what they think they're doing, and really they're lining the pockets of political actors and grifters. Um, yeah, this money is just going to shady, dishonest, skilled career scammers who know how to manipulate the emotions of normal, everyday people. These people. These people. Good-hearted people. Good, honest people like you and me who want to make a difference and who want to do what's right, seek and pursue and promote what's good, true, and beautiful, are being manipulated. Um... And it's all, you know, because it's the rage against guys like this, the bureaucrats like this, the evil people like this. All of that rage against this guy is being manipulated. The emotions are being manipulated. And as a result, grifters and schemers and scammers' pockets are being lined. Um, most of the funds have come from Americans and other foreign nations to this GoFundMe page that's supposedly paying for this whole thing and actually, actually paying for the truckers. To do this, to take the time off work, to fuel their trucks, to feed them, to house them, to give them showers, etc. And it's, you know, that fact that this foreign money is involved, you know, most of the money involved is foreign, is, um, you know, turning this supposedly authentic nationalist protest into a globalist cause and likely just a worldwide money laundering opportunity for grifters and fraudsters on the right, quote unquote. And, you know, just what exactly happens in a few weeks when grocery store shelves are empty, when normal people can't refill their medical prescriptions, and when their jobs are being lost because of the supply chain breakdowns that will inevitably result from these truckers not working for a month. Um, the people that work in factories and storehouses who load these trucks will likely lose their jobs, right? There's no trucks to load and at least temporarily, if not permanently. And the people who unload these trucks and stock the shelves of the stores will likely lose their jobs, again, at least temporarily, if not permanently. And small businesses who have already been unable to compete with companies like Amazon and Walmart will be further damaged and destroyed as they're unable to sell goods locally and unable to ship them out as these truckers are unavailable for weeks and weeks as they are parked and blocking traffic in the capital, as you can see here. You know, the people that are supposed to be helping small businesses work and function and keep their shelves stocked and <laughs> supplied and ready to be traded with the people, the regular everyday people like you and me. The people who make that happen are currently standing around in the capital, screaming and shouting at empty buildings, right? Honking their horns at empty buildings in a sad attempt to ask nicely for their rights to be given back by bought out bureaucrats and, you know, people who could care less about the well-being of people like you or me or truckers or small business owners, people that just are human farmers who care about power and control. Um, good luck asking nicely for your rights back from those people. This whole thing is a big joke, a giant scam, and the perfect excuse for the ruling powers to take more freedoms, 
to blame their own inflation and supply chain breakdown failures on the back of the backs of normal good-hearted folks in a few weeks and months the months to come we will see a lot of normal people who have suffered real loss due to this per protest people whose businesses will suffer people who were fired people who went hungry people who went without their medicines and all of that negative energy will not be focused where it truly belongs we're going to pretend like this is focusing the energy on the bureaucrats the evil shady people but in reality in the weeks to come we're going to be seeing a lot of negative energy focused at these people <laughs> these truckers who caused all these problems caused all these problems the inflation the supply chain breakdowns the business closings the firings and you know all these problems that are truly being caused by the ruling class to begin with will instead be blamed on the working class and it will justify the ruling class taking more of our freedoms avoiding consequences for their actions and it will all eventually lead to the rollout of driverless trucks and just in general replacing workers with robots to avoid the supposed problems in the future this trucker convoy is a scam it's a joke and it is going to be used against us cheer it on all you want be emotional and support it all you want give it your money all you want but it is going to be used against us it is not helping us it may seem that way right now in the moment but give it a few weeks a few months it is going to be used against us the normal everyday working class people the good-hearted people who want to make their nations a better place who want to provide for and protect our families who want their freedoms and justice for evildoers don't fall for this start asking questions don't send your money to known grifters shady organizations questionable at best gofundme pages don't send your money to them and stop putting up with the ruling class demonizing you and refusing and refuse to comply with their unjust unrighteous rules and demands in your life locally and continually refuse to comply with their unrighteous demands mobs in capital cities um you know just might be a bad idea guys <laughs> uh, you didn't know already you know having like a mob in a capital city is uh probably not a good idea you know you might have not might not have learned that lesson last year on january 6th in washington dc but this might not be the best idea guys if you're like not actually a revolutionary seeking to overthrow the government by force and replace it with yourself and your buddies you know this show of force that isn't actually backed by any violence any real substance um might not be a good idea guys it might be used against you <laughs> um i don't know how many times it's going to take to learn that lesson but eesh, not a good idea instead focus your time focus your energy and focus your resources on rebuilding yourself your family your communities and your churches they need it badly these empty buildings right here don't need to be honked at and screamed at um, your families your communities and your churches need you right now truly and seriously it's time to stop begging politicians and voting for politicians to save ever, save your problems fix your problems and save you you need to be the hero that you're waiting for you need to use your time your energy your resources on rebuilding your life rebuilding your family your communities and your churches and let's go out and make real change in our life happen in normal simple everyday ways instead of just larping around like revolutionaries you know sorry not sorry <laughs>